I'm Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse, and today you're gonna learn the fastest way to get better on this machine as a beginner. Welcome to Dark Horse, where you are the hero of your own story and we're the guide that gets you there. Let's cut to the chase and get to the point where you are just ski erging faster, happier and enjoying your workouts so that this thing isn't quite as much of a black pit of energy as it is for many people. Let's just, just quit, just quit talking Shane and just go right into it. Just like right into the information. Straight to it. No mincing words. Away we go. So to get started, it's really important that first and foremost, we understand how this machine works. Basically, these handles move the flywheel that's down there, and your body is the thing that moves the handles. Therefore, this, this thing, the body, has to move right in order to make this move the flywheel. Does that make sense? Let's, once we grasp that, the rest gets much easier from there. Body moves the handle, moves the flywheel. Getting started, you're gonna set your feet in the right position because that's gonna be your foundation for where you move. Easiest way to do that. Now, aside from outlying foot sizes, if you have a generally normal foot size, you can measure two feet back from the flywheel, and then you're going to place that third foot at the line of your heel from the second foot, and that should put you about 24 inches, roughly 18 to 24 inches behind the flywheel. Then you'll set your feet at shoulder width. All right, now that you have your feet set in the right place, the second most important part is getting your handles set on the handles properly. Now, first and foremost, get the wide part of the handle adjusted so that it's resting on the thick, meaty heel of your hand or right around the, the base of your wrist slash the connection to your hand. Then your elbows are gonna be bent at 90 degrees with your hands slightly above the head. The important thing to imagine is if I told you that you had to hold a beach ball in front of your face and couldn't use your hands, that essentially would create the catch position on this machine because that's a normal thing that I would ask you to do. Next, to get the flywheel actually moving, remember body, handle, flywheel, you're gonna make an aggressive downward crunch. Now this is first and foremost the movement that you make. You need to lock in and crunch quickly. And that snap of a movement is what is going to establish tension on the handle and begin moving it downwards. You don't want any of this, I like to call it the Michael Phelps technique, right? You don't, none of this getting here to come down and around. That's an inefficient movement pattern where you're spending energy in that rotator cuff just trying to bring the handle up and down. Instead, by being here and making a quick active crunch motion down, you're gonna begin that downward momentum. Now it's very common to see people squatting really low into the stroke or using that Michael Phelps technique. Just understand that the majority of the power comes from creation at the top quarter of the stroke as opposed to the bottom half. And that's a really important distinction to make. Place your efforts on getting power up top rather than power at the bottom. Then as you're following through the stroke from that aggressive crunch, what you're gonna have happen is that the hands travel right by the pockets. The important distinction here is that the hands travel by the pockets as a byproduct of the downward momentum, not because we're trying to establish a tricep extension. A good way to note whether or not you're getting this right is you should feel like you're putting your weight on top of the handles, which creates a downward push, versus some kind of a squat or getting behind the handles because that results in a pull. And we always want to, just like in the rowing stroke, be thinking about a push not a pull. From there, it's an easy stand up. You don't have to travel this long distance because you've been squatting down and your arms aren't in this crazy outward position. Your hands are just by your pockets. So it's an easy stand. At this point, when you come up, think about coming up nice and easy. You shouldn't be under a whole lot of tension because you can't work on the machine. So come up nice and easy and you're welcome to come up onto your toes a little bit. The important distinction is that you don't come up to your toes because you're trying to do a calf raise you come up to your toes as a byproduct of that upward momentum that you've created, and you just happen to float for a moment up on the toes. That will also give you the opportunity as you turn around to put your weight on top of the handles and create that downward momentum and push into the handles again. One final note that's really important to make, and this also comes with rowing as well as the skier, don't be in a rush to overextend at either the top or the bottom. 
get as tall as you can get within your own anatomy. Stretching outside of that is going to make you more inefficient because you're gonna to have to work to get just back to the starting phase in order to do work. So stretching taller is not always going to be the solution. Instead, search to find your tallest good position instead of just your tallest position, period. Those are the basics, but what about some of the smaller details? Because I know there are two primary that tend to come up a lot. The first is, where should my eyes go? And that's an excellent question. Something that you should be paying attention to is what your eyes do. For me personally, and, and this is a, a personal discussion, I like to try and keep my head relatively neutral. And I try to keep my eyes relatively fixed on the monitor because that keeps a nice sight line and I don't get dizzy. I find that if my eyes come up with my body and down every time, it actually starts to make me dizzy or a little bit motion sick. So I try to fix my eyes on the monitor, but I try to keep my head neutral so that I'm not craning my head and putting my spine into, or my cervical spine into a poor position as I'm skiing. The second question is, what about damper setting? How do I choose the right damper setting? I wanna start by making a note. If you take a look at the flywheel on the Concept2 ski erg, especially the new black versions, you'll notice that there's a plastic sheath over the flywheel. What that does is it limits airflow in and out of the flywheel, essentially making any damper setting lighter than the same damper setting on a rower because it's limiting air supply. What that tells us is that there's a need for a lighter damper on this, mostly because our shoulders are a smaller and not as strong joint as our leg, our knees, and our hips. And therefore, we want to make sure that we are keeping a lighter load as we move through the stroke. My suggestion, play with something in the middle range. Think like two to six is generally a good range. The higher you go, generally the harder it's going to be on that joint to be able to support over a prolonged period of time. It also is not going to allow you to be quick and light with the handles, which is the type of technique that you're going to want when you are thinking about skiing properly. And the final question that I would say a lot of people are thinking is what about stroke rate? Well, it's definitely higher than it's going to be on the rower. With this quick turnover stroke rate, you could expect a stroke rate anywhere from 40 to 65 strokes per minute. And that's normal. That's not out of range. I would say if you're down at a 30, that's actually abnormally low. If you're up at a 70, you're obviously turning over a lot faster than you need. Shoot for somewhere between a 45 to 60, and you'll be in a generally good range for stroke rate on the skier. And what else did I miss? I'm sure there are plenty of questions. If I didn't address it, drop it in the comments below because I wanna know what you wanna know, because then I can help you know. And then I'll know, and you'll know, and we'll all know together. And there you have it. The technique for ski erg is really not that hard, but just like the rower, it's a learned behavior. It's not a natural movement. You just have to learn how to put yourself in space and time at the right place at the right time to make this handle move that flywheel. So if you enjoyed this video and you found that the message made sense for you and you wanna be the hero of your own story and you're looking for a guide and a community to help you get there, then that's us, that's the Dark Horse community. Hit that subscribe button to join the community and the little bell next to it because then you're gonna get alerted with every new video that we come out with. And as always guys, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the other side. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this and you're looking for more and you want workouts, continuous coaching from me and my other coaches in our private Facebook community. It's our monthly workout program. It's $39 a month. Just go over to darkhorserowing.com slash athlete to sign up now.